Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Fish Locker. Almost on the boat. Down at Sovereignty Marina today, down in Eastbourne. And I'm going fishing with a friend of mine, Mark Fairhurst. I'm here a little bit early, we're getting a lock. This is this is a locked marina. So we need to be I'm here, I'm here early, extra early. I always like to get somewhere 10-15 minutes early. I'm 10 or 15 minutes earlier than my early at the moment. Yeah, just having a bit of a, a skulk around. I do like uh, I do like cutting about in places like this because I just I just find it interesting. I like boats. Yeah, the plan is today that I'm going to go out fishing with a friend of mine on his boat. I've never fished from Eastbourne before, so I don't really know what to expect. But we're going out wrecking and we're going a long way. I think we're going to go and do a bit of lure fishing first, and then possibly when the tide drops off to slack, we might anchor up on a wreck. I'm just in his hands today. We will just see how it goes. Anyway, we're just coming along the way now, so I'll go and get my gear. <laughs> you know when you leave the house and you're like, I'm sure I've forgotten some. I'm sure I've forgotten some. I drove up last night. I've just realised what I've forgotten. I've forgotten my fleece. If that's the only thing I've forgotten, I'll be all right. Tackle box, life jacket, fishing rods. Let's go. There we are. Merrick, come aboard, mate. Right? Yeah. Let's get going. Like I say, it's my first time here. We're just talking there. There just seem to be. A lot more commercial boats up this part of the harbour. I'm just moving through the first, first little lock bridge. Now, Mark and I have been friends for quite a while, but in fact, we've we've only really met in person two or three times. Yeah. One of the beautiful things about about online, about the YouTube, about Facebook and Instagram, is we've we've been conversing for a couple of years. Yeah. Earlier on this year, I was at the Boat Life Show at the NEC. And one of the things there was, I was just, I was bowled over by the, the amazing sense of community amongst boat owners. Loads of people, not just offering me trips, but offering each other trips. And a charter boat on the way here called Deep Blue, owned by Sam and Logan. And he was at the Boat Life Show also. Yeah, we were going to go, and we are going to go for a chat with him, but unfortunately the world's coming back. But what we will be doing, there he is. What we will be doing is I'm going to endeavour to do at least one trip per month from a different port, from a different boat, from either my friend's boats, take my boat somewhere else, or charter boats from other areas. So the first one is from Eastbourne. Mark's YouTube channel, if you haven't guessed already, is, sorry, it says it on his back, Manic Fishing. For anyone who doesn't understand what's going on at the moment, is in order to keep a level of water inside the marina, to keep all the boats afloat, they have these lock gates, which basically lock in a height of water. Well, that height of water in there isn't always the same as the height of water out at sea. So what they do is they lock it through in sections, like, like on a canal. So they'll open one side, we'll come in, hold up, we'll close that door, level out the water either higher or lower, and then open that door on the way out. It's a bit tight in here. <laughs> yeah, a little bit twitchy when that thing was bearing down on us. I thought, oh, I hope it stops. Sunshine! Yeah. <laughs> I love this part of it. I love I love the uh, excitement and anticipation of just when you're heading out. I think it's fantastic. We have got where we're going. I will talk to you a little bit later on about the different layouts because I'm I'm very impressed. The boat that I've got doesn't have a wheelhouse. One of the main reasons why I've, I didn't want a boat with a wheelhouse is because everything you have to do for the controls is in there and I do a lot of like potting and messing about on wrecks but having a repeater outside so you can work the controls out on deck with a secondary repeater, yeah, it's great. I imagine this is what lassies must be like when they when they go out and they both realise that both of them are wearing the same outfit. We're like, <laughs> I was going to say, yours will be the one full of all the expensive lures. <laughs> We're, uh, we've just come up onto a wreck now. I'll, I'll show you real quickly. All we've done there is we've positioned ourselves up tight of the wreck. The first drift is just to see which direction we're going to be drifting. It's just kind of nipped off the corner of it. We're going to be fishing lures over a wreck for things like Pollock, hopefully. 
in my tackle box I have all manner of soft plastic lures and some slow jigs. We've got all rigged up, we'll go for a drift. Hopefully we'll show you a fishing mate. Oh, I nearly lost it, I nearly lost it then. A little bit further away this time, just to give us a bit of a, a better drift. So far, I've only just set the camera up now, <laughs> just because I wanted to make sure that we're fishing right first. I've had two little pollock that have been about that big. I haven't blanked. Mark assures me that they do get bigger. <laughs> All I'm fishing is I'm fishing a little scary eel on about six feet of floral. Not using the scary eel as well. Right? Yeah. When we first got here, the tide was at about two knots. Now it's dropped down to 1.2, 1.3. If it drops down any further, I might try the slow jig. Oh yeah, I have lost one. <laughs> I have lost one lure into the wreck. Lead on a boom. And around that much fluoro. Scary seal. Thank you, Mac. Okay, all we're doing is drop the lead all the way at the bottom, and obviously the little lure follows it. When you hit the bottom, you start winding up. The lure up and down in the water. Doing this type of fishing you will lose tackle in the wreck. Usually though just your hook comes caught. So it's better to make sure that your hook length is lighter than your main line. That way you don't lose the whole lot. Also it's best to make up some spare hook lengths and lures. So when you do snap off you can get back fishing again double quick. You're better off fishing to the conditions, fishing to what's going on. Right, as I was talking about earlier on, we were fishing on the wreck and the tide is dropping away. So we're, we're coming down to slack water. Pollock and predator fish, they fish better with a flowing tide. The tide now has dropped down to 0 0.6, 0 0.8, not one knot. So we're gonna put the anchor down onto the wreck. We've got a good idea of where we're gonna be anchoring up because with the wreck looking like that, and those being all of our drift lines, we know that if we put the anchor down, which way we're going to lay onto it. So we're going to switch over from using the slightly lighter rods and the booms, and I'm going to use my heavier gear. I have brought some fresh mackerel from Cornwall, and Mark has got some cuttlefish. So we're going to see which bait does best. But yeah, we're going to try anchoring up and fishing into the reef over like, as the tide's dropping down onto slack water. We have still got a little bit of motion. But now this, this is the bait that Mark's using. I personally, I don't like using cuttlefish. No. I don't mind using it on other people's boats, but I'll tell you what, it's messy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's, that there's scent. They're really tough and they're full of scent. Yeah, there's, there's a full cuttle there. And I'm using fresh Cornish mackerel. It's just, just exactly the same conger rigs I use at home. It's just a, a 10 or a 12 or Cox and Roll meat hook with a muppet on 200 pound mono. I am getting a bit of a bite here. I don't know if you can see this rod. Yeah. I'll rig the camera up there. This is where we get three real big eels right yeah. at the same time. At the moment, we've just got something small that keeps keeps hammering away at us. I've already had I've already had to change the bits twice just because they keep getting ragged out. Now, 
I did fish with the slow jig for a little bit and caught a couple of pouting, so I know there's a lot of pouting down there. That is a good sign for the other life on the wreck. But, it just means that our baits are getting absolutely savage now. That's good for building a bit of a scent trail, because as the little fish come in and chew the bait, that all breaks up and it makes more scent, which should bring the big fish out. Due to the camera angle, it's deceiving about how much motion there was. You can tell how much we were swinging around by how much I am swaying about here. Sorry, man. Right. The tide's swung round now. So we've brought in the conga rods. We'll pull the anchor up and then go and do drifting. Look at that. Look at that. Can't get my words out. We're going to go out and do some more drifting. Unfortunately, at anchor, the big fish just didn't want to play. We just caught loads of pouting. So while Mark steams us to the next wreck, I'll change all the gear over. Sometimes luck just is not on your side. First drift on a new wreck and I hook straight into it. Now sometimes you can be lucky and you can bounce it out. If not, what you have to do there is pull for a break. So I would lock up on the spool, point the rod tip at the wreck and let the drift of the boat part your line away. Do not wrap the braid around your fingers. You will definitely cut them. You see here, I put a glove on and then pull it out by hand. Yeah. <laughs> Very small, but there you go. I mean, I'd rather catch a dozen of them than nothing. You've got eight ounce on there. Oh, there it is. No, it's not. For me, on this wreck, things just went from bad to worse. Second drift, managed to get hit into a fish and then snagged straight up. I ended up losing three rigs in three drifts on this wreck because there was something, either a piece of net or a piece of rope that was floating somewhere above the wreck. So you weren't snagging into the wreck, you were snagging into something that was stuck into the wreck. The only thing you can really do there is leave and go to another wreck. You can see here Mark uses a piece of foam board to keep all of his spare traces on. All he does is if he snaps one off on the wreck, unwinds one, clips it up and gets back fishing. Potentially a recipe for disaster, but I'm gonna give one of these little shiny guys a go. Try a slow jig. Keeping my glove on though, because I'm expecting it to go straight in the wreck. Not that I don't have faith in myself, but Usually when you get your favourite lure out on that brand new shiny one, you've tied all your new knots and stuff like that. Straight, straight into the wreck. So this top part of this wreck here isn't, isn't as snaggy as the bottom. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yeah. Big eye pouting. <laughs> when you're drifting over a wreck, drift over it, start the engine and steam around it. You never steam straight back over it.
you can see here as the tide is going to the main push of the ebb and we have wind against tide the conditions have started to deteriorate feel better John? feel better when it's in the port? yeah Slightly hooked now. <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> <Hi. laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> to say there's a lot riding that fish is an understatement. That was the lure there. I'm showing you how lightly it was hooked, it's literally just popped out now. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the number of fish that I've just kept like kept plucking at the tail or I've just kept dropping off for and the number of lures I've lost in a wreck I was starting to doubt. So, so all that needs is to ch just to change the sort just to change the mood, you know? Yeah, that's it, Rick. It's the same wreck that we've been drifting over, it's just yeah. a little bit of a turn in the tide or something just to switch them off. Just to I had a hell of a drama then. <laughs> I turned the camera off because battery was dying off. And I just thought, I thought, oh, I'll wind in real quick and I changed batteries and that was when that fish struck. I turned around and I couldn't get the camera turned on, so you missed the start of that. Hopefully you saw the end of it. Sorry, no pressure. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's it, that's my new looking look. Yeah. The only one today that I haven't lost that first job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There it is. Not a monster, but I tell you what, I'm glad to see it. Prime fish though, I'll tell you what they are. They're very pale. Rather than you can get them in the reefs, they're like Gold. golden and brown, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Please. Because the wreck that we're fishing now is in slightly shallower water, we've still only got a drift of about 0 0.8 knots because of the wind against the tide. I've gone down to my lighter setup. I think this is, um, I think this is 35 gram. I'll have a look. I'll get the packet out in a minute. And it's me, yeah, Pen Conflict 50 gram, and this is a Pen Slammer 4, 4,000. I've got, it's either 35 pound braid or 30 pound braid, it's a 30 pound leader. So yeah, it's, it's, it's light. Because we're drifting, I'm chucking my lure towards where we're going. So it's got time to sink by the time that we get there. So by the if I just drop this straight off the back of the boat, by the time we drifted over the wreck, my lure would be somewhere over there. Yeah, that first one was as I was on the way up to change over. And that second one was right bang on the bottom. If I had caught that down my way, I would have said it would have been a codling just from where it took, it took right smack on the bottom. Crazy yields. I've got 
a massive hook something. No. If you're using like a sidewinder, no sorry, a savage gear, a savage gear uh, head on it, they've got a much heavier gauge hook on them. Yeah. It's slightly better. He's been in the wars, this guy, he's been through a net. So you look at that scar on his head. When you're returning fish like this, you'll see me, I'm not throwing them back so they land flat and they slap. I'm putting them back head first. So they're going in with the mouth up into the water. When you bring a fish to the boat, if you're playing them for a long time and you can see they're really lethargic and all their fins are down, they need recovery. You could see with that pollock, all his fins were up, his gills were out, he was, you could feel how tense they are in your hands, they're, they're ready to go back. By kind of torpedoing them back, not only does it give them a bit of a kick start into the water to go back, but they get a burst of oxygenated water over the gills. So generally they go back better. might get to a stage, obviously the tide it runs at different speeds through different states of the tide. The hours through the middle of the tide is when the tide's running the hardest. You might find as the tide keeps picking up, we can't fish with these lighter setups, or if the wind picks up or if the conditions change. But at the moment, while it's working, we'll keep at it. Now one of the, one of the things that I commented on there was, all of my braid is green. In my logic of my mind, I think that's a natural colour. So it might look like seaweed, so the fish might not notice. I have got a mate who only ever uses alunamous yellow. So that kind of puts my theory just completely to the wind, doesn't it? But here, when you're dropping down to the bottom, because, because I don't know ultimately when I'm at the bottom, because it's a light low and we're drifting. It's in quite deep water. I mean, we're in, what are we in? at the moment, 94 feet of water. If I'd have had a coloured braid, like every five meters is a different color. I would have known when I was at the bottom, on the first time when I reached the bottom, I would have known, all oh, right, it's purple. So the next time I know that when I'm coming up to purple, I know I'm coming up to the bottom. It is hard to do. Well, like you'll notice that we're kind of leapfrogging each other. And I was in that position when I reeled in, I cast up and my forward is wrong there. It's quite hard to stay in contact with it, just because it's a light lower, because the braid's blowing in the wind. But you should feather them down. You notice that my fingers on the spool letting line out. So that if a fish picks you up on the weight at the bottom, you'll feel it. In front of this on my boat, inside of a warm cabin, autopilot and everything. The conditions have picked up a little bit more. You know, there's no point. No point pushing your luck because it just means that we're going to have a more uncomfortable steam back home. So yeah, what we've done is we've stored everything away tight on the deck and we're off. Yeah, I'd have been, I'd have been freezing cold and drenched by now. <laughs> what a bit of a tidal range on there, we were talking about this earlier on. How much did you say there was to be a six metres? Yeah, six, seven. Six point seven metres of movement and that's considered to be a small tide round there. Small tide down in Cornwall where I am is three metres movement. But still there wasn't as much drift as there is down my way. Just to show different areas. Yeah. This this outside repeater for your for your helm control is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of time. yeah, that's one of the things that would stop me from using a boat like this for things like wrecking. It's because you'd have to go inside the wheelhouse to go and bring yourself up around the wreck and then come out of the wheelhouse and go back in the yeah. There we are, we've made it in, we're just going to clean down. Right, <laughs> it wasn't the easiest to start, but by adapting, to, by kind of adapting to what was going on during the day, uh, tried a few different wrecks out. Some of them had fish on and they just weren't feeding, other ones had a bit of fishing gear on, so we moved to other ones. We tried anchoring up through slack water and just 
plagued out by little tiny eels and pouting, managed to find them in the end though. As it was, we managed to find all the fish just as the conditions were getting worse. So then decided that it wasn't worth pushing our luck. We'd had a good day. Thank you very much, Mark, uh, no for having me. Thank you for yeah. coming on. I hope you've enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.